praise him hallelujah on this beautiful sunday evening it's about 6 20 um 21 eastern standard time here on um saturday 7, uh, september 7th and um i was talking earlier you know the sabbath is today saturday right friday evening sundown to sunday or saturday evening sunset so and god rested on the seventh day and it, it was really cool that today was the seventh and today was the sabbath day hallelujah after god created the world and all creations right in the sky and the sea and on land the creepy crawly things and all of us he rested and today is the seventh guys you know it's the sabbath day we're supposed to rest in the lord's presence but each and every day treat it like a sabbath day and rest in god's presence get in your word get in prayer get in praise and and just give god the thanks and and love and attention and time he deserves um, and, and that's where the real reward is in life. When you spend time with God, it's never time wasted. When people go to work and they work over, you know, they spend a lot of time at work, they get paid. Well, you get paid, but spiritually, when you're hanging out with, with God Almighty, man, he's our, he's our loving creator. Oh, man, our sovereign God, you know, he, he reigns over everything. And he lives and dwells within us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, died on the cross. God left heaven, came to earth to be one of us. His only begotten Son, Jesus, died at the cross. God died for us and rose again from the dead, defeating death through that death and resurrection. All who believe in all of us, this is just the beginning of our lives, man. We get to live forever after this. I'm a little bit tired. It's been a long day, but I call upon the Lord and His Spirit and walk in His Spirit as we got some four-wheelers right by. Uh, out there having fun and uh, got some blinking cool lights on the back pretty cool I wish I could show that to you but um that's a distraction right but you know as we do the Lord's work you know and um, I'm a bit tired and you know I can imagine Jesus was tired many times walking through the wilderness and and preaching and teaching and feeding the hungry healing the sick and how exhausted must him and the apostles have been they were pretty exhausted but they were walking in God's spirit and God gave them power to fulfill that plan and purpose for that day and for their their ministry and, and their purpose and we get it all through the holy spirit it makes us jesus excuse me jesus strong hallelujah been a long day guys and uh but the lord is going to get me through this great message it's god works through us and we're extensions of jesus christ as uh jesus died and rose again walked the earth for 40 days 500 witnesses witnessed our lord and savior walking the earth after they beat him and killed him and he and buried him and he rose from the tomb hallelujah it's exciting wow hallelujah and we all have defeated death because the one who defeated death jesus lives in us his spirit god's spirit god who defeated satan at the cross at the cross excuse me has overcome death and so have we now the message at hand is god um, works through us and we need to let God work through us to allow his beautiful, beautiful spirit of love and joy and peace and hope and everything good about life flow through us to this world where it's hopeless, fearful, greedy, stingy, um, just downright uh, hateful and lying and false accusations, you know, false accusations. And the list goes on, you know. As I watch the trees sway back and forth, you know, I'm just sitting here and see God everywhere I look, you know, it's just been one amazing day. And we need to look around um, our lives as we go through this journey. And during our journey, during our walks and our travels each and every, um, each and every day, we must find that love of Jesus to share with other people, guys. Hungry, the homeless. People you know need something. Give it to them, man, if you got it. Um, you know, I noticed I watch a lot of Facebook stuff and a lot of videos, you know, these these celebrities and people, you know, that really aren't close to the Lord. And they always seem to bless each other. They're rich blessing the rich instead of the rich blessing the poor. Um, and that's, you know, what Jesus came to show us was everyone, we should share what we have with everyone. Even if you got a little bit, and I shared a little bit I got with somebody who ain't got nothing, that little bit is something to someone who has nothing. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, you know. And, you know, and without the Lord living within people, you know, and them living for Jesus, don't expect much from folks, man. I'm just telling you. Um, only when it's good for them and you know this and that and I don't really worry about anything man you know God always provides for for me I know he provides for you as we do his will and his work 
and I live a humble, simple, fun, exciting life with my wife, Karina, and the Lord is the center, and God Almighty is the center of our home and our hearts, our hearts first, then our home, we live in a happy home. Lots of good times, lots of celebration, lots of laughter, lots of peace, lots of looking out for one another, lots of uplifting each other. You know, when this world knocks us down, you know, we need to be there for each other, but God works through us. And I share the love of Jesus with my wife and everyone I meet. Not just the, the clean, fancy guy in a tuxedo or suit, but the, the smelly guy pushing the shopping cart. He's a human being. And I want to share the love of Jesus with everyone. And and I just want to be like Jesus. That's all I can say, guys. It's been a very long day. I keep stressing that it made it longer. But I, you know, I claim, you know, I claim victory today. I've been through a lot today. A lot of learning, a lot of preaching, teaching, uh, going through um, some t attacks of the enemy, um, just like us all. You know, the enemy don't want me right now doing this video. I went through a lot of stuff today, and you know, um, and here I am. God's sustained me. He's given me victory. He's given me enough to to put down all the depression, anxiety, anger I was feeling earlier, to pick up and get out of that flesh and put the flesh to death and to walk. And his spirit right now that comforts me and soothes me and takes away my anger. I have forgiveness for people. I have peace now full of anxiety's gone. The peace of God is upon me. The joy and laughter is in my mouth, in my smile again. You know, it's, it's what God gives you when you're in his presence. This is why I always talk about God because I like being happy. I like being at peace. I like being strong. I like being friendly. I like being um, loving and caring and kind to everyone and anyone that I meet in a day to share the love of Jesus in my heart with them. With that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get on reading here. It's really quite windy out here, and uh, I can't wait to get in and take a hot shower. I'm feeling a little chilly. Lord, keep me warm as I do your will and your work right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Focus is on the Lord now, and the elements around me don't even exist right now. Praise God. I just felt this warmth come upon me. Hallelujah. God, you are so, so good. You ask, you shall receive. Just like that, man. Boom. It says, God works through us. I'm going to be reading Matthew 25, verses 31 through 40. The Son of Man will judge the nations. When Jesus comes to judge, he will separate the goats from the sheep, right? See, the sheeps are obedient to the shepherd in, in, in a farm, right? You know, in that kind of life. And they're obedient. And they follow the shepherd. But goats stray away. And that's why a shepherd, you know, a real sheep shepherd, separates the goats from the sheep. And they uh, actually have different diets as well and stray off to go find other stuff from the sheeps. And that's why they, and they, they, they stray away from the shepherd. Well, how many people today are straying away from Jesus Christ? He's our good shepherd as sheep in his flock, as believers, friends of Jesus Christ, believers in him. And, you know, how many people stray away? Even even believers in Jesus. Yeah, I know Jesus. And, you know, I, I was raised, you know, this or that. And I've read the Bible. But they're goats and have strayed away from Jesus, the shepherd, you know. And then it really represents the non-believer that, you know, on Judgment Day, the believers, Jesus Christ, will the shepherd, the good shepherd is one of God's names, um, will separate the goats. The non-believers will go to the left and the sheep will go to the right. We're going to heaven. And those goats represent people who denied Jesus and re refuse to live by his commands and his ways. Loving, kind, loyal, telling the truth and not lying and being kind to people and stuff, you know. Um, and they're going into the pits of hell, man. There's no reward for bad behavior anywhere here today at your job, at school, with your wife, with your kids. You know, you, you know, there's no reward for acting crazy, you know. But there is reward for trying to be obedient. God just wants us to try. He's not looking for perfection. That was Jesus' job. He's just looking for progress from us guys and a heart that's willing to try every day to be more like Jesus and less like this world and allow God to work through us to do so. The Son of Man will judge the nations. 31 through uh, 40, I'm going to read. The Son of Man will judge the nations. Jesus is speaking red letters. Hallelujah. God is teaching right now. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, He will sit on the throne of His glory and all the nations will be gathered before Him. 
can't escape this judgment day, guys. So that's why I'm telling everybody, make things right with God and live for him right now. And ask Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior before it's too late. Too late. What do you got to lose? My nephew uh, said to me one time, you know, hey, Uncle Daryl, you know, I want to believe in Jesus. But what happens if I find out he's fake? God told me, tell him, you're going to find out he's real. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's. It's that real, man. Jesus is real. His name offends people. My T-shirt that I'm wearing right here offends people. That's the power of Jesus. That's how real he is. The more offended people get, the realer God is. So keep that in mind. If you don't believe the Bible, you don't believe nothing I'm saying, say Jesus' name to somebody and watch how upset they get. That's how real he is. The matter people get, the realer he is. Oh, but he said, um, you know, if I find out he's fake, but I said, wonder if you find out in the end he's, he's real. And then, you know, my poor nephew or family, any of my friends or family have to go left. And I'm going right with the family and friends who believe. It's going to be sad to see them knowing where they're going when they go left into the pits of hell, man. This is why I do what I do, man. You know, I'm just a regular guy who was a big sinner, man. Satan's top, uh, you know, fornicator, you know, adult porn watcher, drug addict, drug dealer. I, I was everything bad about, you know, and I was born into this and how to be better at all of it. And God has saved me from all of that. He's given me self-control because he's put my flesh to death that desired all these hate, these harmful and sinful things. And now I'm walking in his spirit of obedience and put all of that garbage to death. Now I'm sitting pretty with a beautiful wife who's more beautiful than I can ever imagine and she's beautiful more beautiful inside with Jesus living in her heart she's being more kind more giving more praying and, and I'm watching her grow and be more like Jesus allowing Jesus to work through her with her kindness to her family and friends sometimes who ain't so nice to her and you know that's what Jesus did he showed kindness and love even to his enemies and he did that at the cross even though we were all his enemies at the cross he died for everybody and they, you can have salvation right now wow verse 33 and he will set the sheep let me go back here 32 all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats as we were speaking on earlier and he will set the sheep on his right and the goats on their left the goats here are representing the non-believers guys and people just who rejected to live like jesus then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom. Prepare for you, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Heaven's already waiting on us, guys. And all who believe, we go right to heaven, man. That's amazing, right? 35. And as you're a believer in Christ, you know, and walking in God's spirit, spending time in prayer and praise and thanks and repentance, right, is a big part of being a Christian, saying sorry when you're wrong. Not and not just when people see it, but the God who sees all, we always got to be in repentance and and and, and quiet um, and uh, take time to repent to God. Even when people don't see what you're doing, God's watching everything you're doing, guys. Everything you're doing is not a secret. God is everywhere. He sees what you're seeing. He's here. What you're see He just sees all and hears all. Keep it right with God, man. You might be able to lie to me or plot against my life. God's watching. God's listening. And God's on my side, you know, and when God, when God is for you, no one, who can be against you? Nobody. This is just the beginning of our lives, man. I want to see everybody in heaven. This is so amazing to read this. And it's just sad thinking all the family and friends who reject Jesus right now. And they run into Satan's arms, the very one that's got them depressed or drug addicted or hurting and suffering right now. See, I'm suffering for evil and that, or suffering for good. When you're sinning, you're you're suffering for evil. There's no reward there. But through my suffering, and I'm suffering for good, there's much reward for me in heaven. Right now, with joy and peace, doing there's doing right in life, telling the truth to people, no matter if it hurts them or not, you're speaking the truth. So it's okay, you know, when people get hurt. I used to hurt people by lying to them. Now I tell the truth. Truth is how we grow, and people need to hear the truth. And I'm okay with it now. But we need to share God's truth and love with everybody. 34, then the king said, will say to them on his right hand, come, come, you blessed, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth, from the beginning, right? For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. 
37, Then the righteous will answer, saying, Lord, we did not see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink. When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it, to uh, you did it to one of the least of these brethren you did it for me simply meaning when you help other people you're helping god when you feed other people you're feeding god when you clothe them you're clothing god when you're um inviting them into your home you're inviting god into your home when you help other people man you're helping god this is god's creations right and and we need to be that 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 love that this world is missing and be living in the spirit of God, which is selflessness, selfless, not selfish, like the flesh, all about me, all about mine. You know, I, again, I, I see so many people with so much given to other people that have so much. It just doesn't make any sense. But that's the world we live in. They don't know when you got enough, you should give away. No, I work for mine. I'm holding on to mine. They don't deserve nothing. They don't work. Sometimes that's the case. But sometimes, you know, it's time to show them Jesus love and be forgiving, you know, not revengeful and, and loving, not hateful and not greedy, but giving. And that's what it's all about, guys, you know, but we don't help our enemies, you know, um, we don't help people who come against us. But, you know, God does say feed your enemies, you know, if they're thirsty, give them water. You know, if, if Mario, the guy who beat and bullied my daughter and took my freedom away, knocked on my door, I would give him some food and drink. I don't think I'd invite him in. But I'd bless them with clothes and stuff to stay warm and a blanket, you know. I wouldn't be able to, you know, I know I would help him, but I don't know in which way. I mean, that's saying a lot. I hugged this man who beat and bullied my daughter. You know, it's funny, real quickly, I showed him the love of Jesus and forgiveness of Jesus when I was going to murder him. True story. You know, I'm a father. My daughter was getting beat and bullied and then, and then bullied to lie against me. And you want to talk about pain and anger? Shh. This guy had no no idea what he was in store for and the beating was coming his way and the torture that I was going to put him through. But the Lord said, no, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I looked and saw the scripture. God was speaking to me that day and I let it all go. People walking around gossiping about a lie from a long time ago. And here I done forgave this man, done moved on, um, done contacted him again while he sits in prison for some unrelated charge and not you know of what he did for us but finally me and my daughter got some kind of justice but god works through us and i showed him forgiveness i preached the gospel to make his life right admit admit to his wrong what he did to me and my daughter and life will be right until then it won't be right he sits in prison i know it's not right and even when i wrote him i know he didn't find jesus yet because he still don't want to confess to what he's done to me and my daughter but god worked through me and i wasn't angry I just said it's God's timing when that happens and I showed him forgiveness and love and answered him in a gentle loving way praise God guys look I'm gonna move on it's a really tough time for me you know when I think about that but then if I didn't go through that life from hell I wouldn't be the man of God I am today the friend of God I am today I wouldn't have this joy this peace this strength to keep pushing on to give my worries and burdens to God to help you up off the ground because if I didn't do that I'd be laying on the ground excuse me down on the ground next to you if I'm laying next to you how can I help you up I want to be the helper I don't want to be the help and God allows me to be the helper because he is living within me and allowing me to have this honor and privilege to be an extension of him um, it's just been an unbelievable walk and journey in my life I don't know what you've been through but uh, I don't know if you've ever been falsely accused of a crime of any kind it's not fun be, um, being you know guilty uh, looked at as guilty as something you never done or never would even imagine it doing but um, it was part of the plan uh, my story is Joseph in the Old Testament I'll say it again to anybody out there who's been falsely accused don't worry about what anybody's gossiping about. Womp, 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 womp. Your answer to them is, and my answer God gave me, if you don't know the truth, you shouldn't be talking about a lie. You're just being a little gossiper for Satan. Go away. End of the story. Walk away. To me, that's showing love to somebody. Walking away when I really want to grab them up. <laughs> but the Lord, again, God works through me, and I show them love and forgiveness every time. And no one can ever make me come out of Christ's character to be violent unless I'm defending a family, friend, the weak or the innocent, and God will give me power and strength. I don't care who they are. 
and I'll come to the rescue and allow God to work through me to save the weak and the innocent in any moment. I will give my life. I will battle anybody, how big they are. God will give me power and strength to win that victory and battle for that weak and the innocent person at that moment, whenever that may happen, if it ever happens. But I choose to give my enemies to God and let him crush them. Hallelujah. King David taught me that in the book of Psalm. Give your enemies to God. God will take care of your enemies. Um, you know, when I was going to break every bone in this man's body, God said, he'll heal up from that. You'll be on death row or in prison forever. You'll never be able to fulfill the plan and purpose for me. So vengeance is mine, says the Lord. God told me this, and this is a true story. What I can do to him, I'll never forget it. What I can do to him, the Lord said. This just gave me so much peace, guys. All the hatred and anger went away. Revenge went away. I mean, God's spirit. And he said, what I can do to him, he can never escape. He can never heal from what I can put on his heart and weigh him down in life. That heaviness that Mario feels every single day that drove him to drinking and drugs and what wound him up in prison. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I remember sinning, you know, never did nothing like he did to me and my daughter. But, you know, I've done a lot of bad stuff in my life, you know, and um, a lot of things, you know. Um, you know, I'm a sinner saved by grace. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm, per I'm not perfect. I'm just forgiven. And God has redeemed me through his precious blood. And, uh, and I'm a sinner saved by grace. But I know one day the truth will be told and you know to all the people out there gossiping and until that day i'll just keep showing you love i allow god to work through that and work through me to you because um i choose not to be ven revengeful or hateful and do lucifer's work i want to continue to do the lord's work because he died for me and i want to live my best for him and i just can't wait for that day but if the day never comes where the truth never revealed it doesn't matter to everybody out there falsely accused don't worry about what anybody thinks or says. Stay focused on there was a purpose behind what you went through. There was a purpose behind Joseph, what, what he went through. God, when I asked why, my Bible was over there. It's, now it's in front of me open. And I read it, and I'm like, wow, okay, I trust you. Somebody put the Bible there. That was Almighty God. When I you ask a question, he will give you an answer, the most perfect answer where you can never ask the question again, guys. So as we go ahead through this now, and, and we do this journey here in this walk, I want you to know that we need to keep focused on the Lord and we need to stay focused on him. Why is us walking in his spirit, staying in our word, praying to him and being his friend. If you're in the world, you will fill up on garbage, greediness, gossip, anger, um, hopelessness, um, just always down and out and blue because that's what this world will do to you. And that's what Satan does. He steals, kills, and destroys your life, your relationships, your health, your mental, spiritually first, and mental and physical, drugs and alcohol. It all will kill you eventually. It's all polluting your body with garbage, man, of this world. Nothing's real here. The only thing real is God's word, man, and him living within us, the spirit of truth. He's the only truth is in his word and living within us. God is the only truth on his planet. This is why you and I are hated. I'm hated by even nice people. Sometimes I'm too happy for them. I'm smiling too much. One one lady said, you're always smiling. Like, it's a bad thing. I'm like, this is one lost world, not mean lost, when smiling is a bad thing. Smiling, not preaching the word or, or anything, but just smiling, being being outgoing and friendly. They hate it because this world makes you depressed and makes you hide in a shell and when you know when you see someone outgoing and happy you want to be that way you hate them because you can't feel that way i used to be like that for years look at this guy he's whistling he's all happy he had a friendship with god the whole time man you know how about that the guy that i hated was wondering how can he be so happy this is sick this is crazy so when you don't have god then you will be like that you know and it's unfortunate you know and people don't never want to be around me they kind of shun me away and, and don't want to talk, cut this conversation short because he might mention Jesus. He might mention a Bible scripture. Oh, no. Like it's such a bad thing to not steal, to love your neighbor, to, to love your wife. <laughs> it's like, what? It shows you that the Bible's real, okay? Just know that, guys. But as we do this walk, we need to stay focused on letting God work through us. God works through us, and it's an amazing feeling. I don't care how much money you got, man. When you do, when you allow God to work through you and you have a friendship with God on a daily basis and all throughout the day, it's like happy, 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 joy, joy, joy that your money can't buy. And I'm being honest with you, man. See, this is like a sober high. The, the, the getting high, high always fades away and you got to keep running back to that good time and you're polluting your body. But when you're in the presence of God, 
it's a healthy high. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I didn't expect to say any of this stuff. Someone needed to hear what I said or God wouldn't have gave it me the words to speak. This is what's amazing about these videos, guys. You might sit here and think, oh, yeah, he's going off about this, about that. Oh, a lie from hell. Um, oh, you know, this and that. God gives me these words, man. I have a certain agenda here and a certain thing that I'm going to write, write down and what how I think it's going to go. But as soon as I invite the Lord in, it goes not the direction I want it to go. But this way, over that way, down this way, and then back that way. It's amazing. God's in total control, you know. Praise God, Lord, guys, you know. And then, uh, you know, I was reading about um, goats as we were talking about goats before I move on. And it was uh, saying that goats sometimes is uh, symbolically uh, re represents oppressors and wicked men in the Bible. Now, as we go through this world, you know, you hear about Michael Jordan. He's the goat. You know, this one's the goat. This one's the goat. I don't want to be a goat. The goat represents Satan, and goat, goats are disobedient. And doesn't that make sense that Jesus will separate us, his sheep, right? Um, from the goats. From the goats. From the goats that are disobedient, right? I was pausing. I thought they were going to rev up sooner, but but you know it's 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 really neat that the goats are symbolically represented in the book of Ezekiel, um, chapter thirty-four, verse seventeen. Go check that out. And Leviticus chapter seventeen, verse seven, um, represent oppressors and wicked men. And here's these men. They're all calling themselves the goat, the goat, and they're all like Michael Jordan. Uh, Mark Cahill was a basketball player in Auburn University with Charles Barkley back in the day. Charles Barkley rejected Jesus. Mark Cahill was a probably, you know, he was a really good baller. And, uh, you know, he didn't get all the attention that, you know, Barkley got and all these other people got. And, you know, in their cases, you know, they sold them souls to the devil, man, for their fame and fortune. How else can you explain these guys being rich and famous? Got Satan makes them rich and famous for their souls. You know, Mark Cahill is a humble life. He works for the Lord, you know. And, you know, he he was truly, really an all-star. Forget about on the basketball court, but off. And Michael Jordan rejected him at a party one time as he wrote a book about him meeting Michael Jordan with Charles Barkley, meeting all these people. They went to some club, you know. He's there drinking a soda, hanging out with them, just being a witness and letting God work through him. They're being a witness. And he asked Michael Jordan if he wanted to know about God and Jesus. And he said, I don't want to hear about that. And that just makes, you know, proves it how rich Michael Jordan is selling these overpriced tennis shoes. And he's the goat. Again, symbolic, you know, symbolically being a goat represents the, the oppressor and the wicked. And I mean, how much money does this man need? How much money do those tennis shoes only cost about $10 to make and they sell them for hundreds of dollars? And he's in charge of that decision, you know. And it's really quite sad that, you know, all the money he's got. He don't sign autographs. He don't like lower his price in shoes. I mean, if he, he had God working through him, you know, it would be a whole different Michael Jordan. But it's the same Michael Jordan, you know. Look at me. You know, live it up, man, while you can. Because he's going to be the GOAT. He is the GOAT, right? The GOAT. LeBron, the GOAT. They're all going to be thrown into the left side and right into the pits of hell. And that's the sad part. They, they, uh, they, um... See, we die now. We die now in Christ and live it up forever later on. These people um, live it up now and die later for eternity in, you know, in the pits of hell, lake of fire. It's not going to be a good time for any of these folks, man. But it's, I, it's, it's really neat to think that they call these people, you know, goats. And, and a goat is the devil. Goat is symbolic, again, oppressor and wicked men. They reject, you know, God. They reject, the, you know, the sheep, um, the herder, you know, the sheep herder. The shepherd, um, you know, the goats reject him and go their way and say, I ain't following you and the sheep. We're doing our own thing. And that's what Michael Jordan and all these so-called celebrities, they're celebrities in their own minds because they believe the lies from Lucifer. All these rockers and rappers and Bob Dylan, you know, he admitted to selling his soul. Jim Carrey. So many people have just came out and said it. It's not a joke. It's true. And these people are goats. They call them the goats, greatest of all time in their own minds because, again, they believed a lie from Lucifer. Lucifer set them up in a lie, a life that's a pure lie. See, Jesus is the truth. And if you ain't got Jesus, you're living a lie, period. Hallelujah. Live one for years. Listen to me, guys. Here we go. God works through us. Sent in by Andrea, uh, Andrea uh, Jones Walker from Florida. 
good sister M Madison down in Florida. Hallelujah. It says, my husband and I were traveling from Florida to Cleveland uh, to the Cleveland C Clinic in Ohio for an appointment to treat congestive heart failure. One evening flight uh, to Cleveland had been canceled and we spent the night in the airport before flying standby the next day. That just sounds like a tough time. Weary and slept, uh, sleep deprived, we arrived at the hotel at 10 a.m. where we were unable to check in early. We wandered into the hotel restaurant to get breakfast, but it was closed until lunch. Exhausted and tearful, I can't even imagine how these folks feel. I explained our situation to the cook they saw there, and he offered to prepare them something. They prepare something for them. I mean, how nice is that one? He could have said, "Nope, we're closed till lunch." Right? Wow, what an act of kindness. As we were eating. I realized the gift this man gave us, not only physical food, she says here, but our circumstances had gone downhill since our flight was canceled, and this cook showed us a great kindness by volunteering to provide a meal for us during his break. Gave him a spiritual blessing of love and kindness that only God can provide through that man's heart. I'm unreal. But to me, she says, it was so much more than the breakfast. His act of kindness nourished my soul even more than my body, right? More than physical food going into the belly nourished her soul because of this act of kindness. I truly saw Jesus working through this man. God works in small yet profound ways. We never know how we will be affected or how we will affect someone else when we do God's work, right? I mean, you know, little kindness hold the door open saying good you know saying good night nice hairdo nice jacket nice sweatshirt i hear that all day and it's like wow thanks you know and jesus you know what he gets the glory right but you know what i'm saying but any little act of kindness might not only make someone's day but make their life we never know how we we have um we will affect um we will be affected or how we will affect someone else i hope i will always remember that the cook's gener um i will always remember that cook's generosity especially when I become tired and weary with life's inconveniences. And I pray his act of kindness inspires me to do the same. You know, as this lady is speaking, you know, someone who's working pretty hard, they've been through a tough time and they got blessed up when they needed it the most. You know, when we step up and help someone, we don't know their situation, even though she explained their situation to them, you know, let God work through you to share his love with other people and make this world a better and better place as this man did for them, inspired her to do the same. See, Jesus inspires me. He lives, God lives in me. He inspires me all day to do acts of kindness. And people are like, what is he doing that for? He must want something. Da, 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 da. No, I'm just sharing the love of Jesus with you. And that's exactly what I tell him. It's a wit. It's a moment to witness the love that I just share with you is coming from Jesus, the Lord, his Holy Spirit, God Almighty living within me to you hallelujah guys thought for today um god works through me to show others love show the love to others let god work through you to show others love okay praise the lord guys and uh i hope everybody has a blessed evening i'll talk to you soon i'm going to get a hot shower cozy up with my wife and just enjoy the evening with the lord in our presence holy spirit you're always welcome in our hearts and our homes you lord you are welcome peace hallelujah